सो गाइज आर फर्स्ट इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन पैरामेट्रिक एंड नॉन पैरामेट्रिक मशीन लर्निंग एल्गोरिदम्स so before starting trust me i'll tell you this honestly i have seen this question being asked quite a lot during interviews so it is a very important machine learning interview question let's answer this question in order to answer this question i'll do four things i'll explain four things the first thing that i would explain is that machine learning algorithms are functions mathematical functions i'll focus on this point then i'll give you the main point of difference uh, between a parametric and machine uh, non parametric machine learning algorithm then i'll classify the famous machine learning algorithms into parametric or non parametric category and finally i'll give you some more point of differences between these two classes okay so let's start our discussion with the first point that machine learning algorithms are basically functions i'll give you an example let's say you have a very simple regression problem where you have input column experience and output column salary okay so let's say our experience is 3 years and our salary is 4.5 lakhs our experience is 8 years and our output salary is 26 lakhs uh, our input is 5 years and our output salary is 12 lakhs okay and so on let's say we have data for 100 employees okay now if you plot this data you will get a scatter plot like this you will get a scatter plot so over here you will have your experience column and over here you will have your salary column okay now i want to build a predictor to which if we give experience it will give me the salary okay so if you think in a way we are building a function okay so we are trying out we are trying to find out a function a mathematical function between experience and salary so you must have seen a notation like this y is equal to fx now you can easily apply this logic to this problem now salary is equal to f of experience so you can also say that salary is a function of experience or you can say salary depends on experience so if experience changes salary also changes but by how much quantity that we don't know because we don't know the nature of this function is it x square is it x cube is it e ki power x we don't know that yet okay but you have to understand that machine learning algorithms when we give them a particular data they are trying to find out the underlying function that is present in that data this understanding is very very important now let's define <clears throat> what is a parametric machine learning algorithm okay so the definition is very simple the definition says whenever you make an assumption on the function of your data then it is a parametric machine learning algorithm i'll give you an example so linear regression is a good example of parametric machine learning why because while doing linear regression you take an assumption you have this assumption that that uh, the function is a line okay so in this case if we are going to apply uh, let's say linear regression you have this assumption that this data is sort of linear and you will fit a line so you already know the graph of this function so in a way you are assuming that this function is going to be a line okay so let's redefine it uh, the definition of parametric machine learning algorithm is that whenever you make an assumption about the nature of the function 
then that kind of algorithm is parametric machine learning algorithm on the contrary if you don't make any assumptions about your function then it is a non parametric machine learning algorithm okay so there is one more definition uh, that is used quite a lot okay so it is based on the number of parameters that a machine learning algorithm has so what are parameters let's talk about parameters so if you talk about linear regression linear regression in one dimension has two parameters so when you are training a linear regression model you are actually trying to find out two things you are trying to find out this equation of the line and this equation has two parameters m and b m being your slope and b your intercept okay so this is called parameter similarly let's say we have a simple neural network let's say we have a simple neural network like this okay now in this neural network we have parameters and we call them weights so w1 w2 w3 and we have b1 b2 and b3 these are the parameters of this neural network so every machine learning algorithm has certain parameters so parameters are the things which we are trying to find value of okay now here comes the second definition and it is based on parameters so according to the second definition a parametric machine learning algorithm has fix number of parameters and it does not depend on the number of rows present in your data i'll give you an example again let's take an example of linear regression so let's say we are working on this data and currently we have employees like we have 200 employees we have a data of 200 employees so we have 200 rows in our data but still if you see this is a 1d simple regression problem and you know that you will fit a line on this data and if you know that you are going to fit a line on data you also know that you need to find only two parameters m and b so you can see in this scenario even if you add data for 200 more employees even then the number of parameters is fixed you have to find only two parameters m and b and it is not dependent on the number of rows in your data now i'll give you an example of non parametric uh, algorithm so a good example is decision tree so let's say we have this data set cgpa iq and got placed or not okay now currently we have let's say 100 students and we train a decision tree model on top of this data and let's say we get a decision tree like this we are getting a decision tree like this now let's add 200 more students or we can say that we have added 200 more rows in our data and now you would see after adding additional data your decision tree will change it might grow so now in this case the parameters are not fixed okay uh, i'll give you one more example of parametric neural networks let's say this is the neural network and we have to find the weights of this neural network now let's say currently we have a data set d with 300 rows if you provide this data to this neural network in this case we have to find out the weights three weights we have to find out three weights 
Now let's say we add 500 more rows to our data. Will it change the number of weights? No, the number of weights will be same in this case also, right? So the idea is very simple. If the number of parameters does not grow with respect to the number of rows present in your data, then it is parametric algorithm. If the number of parameter grows with respect to the number of uh, rows present in your data, then it is a non-parametric algorithm. Okay. One more confusion that people have is that they think non-parametric algorithms have no parameters. No, it's not correct. Non-parametric algorithms also have parameters. It's just that they change or rather they grow with the number of rows in your data. Okay. Now let's uh, see different algorithms and let's classify them into these two categories. Uh, so if you talk about linear regression or logistic regression, they are parametric. If you talk about linear SVM, it is also parametric. If you talk about uh, other SVMs with different kernels, they are non-parametric. Okay. If you talk about KNN, it is non-parametric. If you talk about naive base, it is parametric. Okay. Why parametric? Because it makes an assumption on your data and that assumption is that all of your independent columns are actually independent like they don't depend on each other now this is an assumption and that is why naive base can be categorized as uh, a parametric algorithm okay if you talk about decision tree we already know that it is non-parametric if you talk about random forest or xg boost or gradient boost or ADA boost, all of these are non-parametric algorithms. If you talk about simple neural networks, they are parametric. Okay. If you talk about complex neural networks, they are mostly non-parametric. So the, this is the classification. Now, finally, I'll give you a few more uh, differences between parametric and non-parametric algorithms in this table. So the first point of difference is that in the parametric machine learning algorithm, uh, basically you are trying to find out a mathematical function. You are trying to find out y is equal to fx, right? So in parametric machine learning algorithm, since you already have made an assumption your task of classification or regression becomes easier and generally the function that you are trying to find out is a simple mathematical function. Like in the case of linear regression, it is a line which is a simple function, right? But in the case of a non-parametric algorithm, since you have no assumptions, since you have not simplified things your task is difficult and that is why the mathematical function that you are going to find is a complex mathematical function. So it could be a function like this. It could be a function like this. Okay. Now this is a complex mathematical function. Okay. So the underlying function is complex. Second, because of the assumptions that you have made, your task becomes easier, right? So that is why you need less data to train your model. You need less data to train your model. Whereas in the case of non-parametric machine learning algorithm, since you have no assumptions, you know nothing about your data. So you need more data in order to be sure about the data. So that is why during the training phase, you need more data. The third point of difference is that because of the assumptions, sometimes 
we tend to make mistakes okay let's say we are working with linear regression and our assumption is that our data is linear but what if my data is non-linear in this case we will make mistakes and that is why there is a tendency to underfit there is a tendency to not understand the data fully so you underfit sometimes whereas in the case of non-parametric data since you make no assumptions you give value to each and every point and that is why there is a tendency to overfit you can also give value to noise or outliers which is not important so you can focus on non-important things also because there is no assumption to work with and that is why there is a tendency to overfit okay so i hope i have answered your question